Hi everyone. So today we're going to talk about how you can add JavaScript to your website. So right now we have a website that is just purely HTML and CSS. Um, so it's kind of just like a page in a book. Um, and what JavaScript does is it allows your website to be more interactive. Um, so think of it as it's an actual programming language where you can use like if statements and loops and all the other things that we learned in Python um, you can do in JavaScript and you can use that to modify your website. Okay, so the first thing I want to show you is how to show the current time um, on your website. So you would need JavaScript for that because what JavaScript will do is will take the time um, from your computer and display it. And there's a date class in JavaScript that we're going to be using. Okay, so before we can even go into JavaScript, let's put a section in our index.html that will have the date. So after your paragraph tag, I'm going to put one more tag, um, make a footer tag. So then this will go at the very bottom of our page. So I'm going to open this up and make a footer. Um, I'm going to give it an ID number because I'm going to want to reference this particular tag when I'm writing my JavaScript. So that's a little bit different than what we've done before. So you're going to say ID equals and then open quote. Um, and we can call this anything that we want, um, but let's just call it F or footer so we know, okay, that's, that's what it would be. Um, so ID equals F. And what else do we want to say in here? Um, well, we don't want to say anything for now. So let's just close our tag. We can say like time will go here. And then um, we can close our footer and go from there. All right, so now when we run this, um, you'll see at the very bottom it says time will go here. Um, and so once we figure out how to put the time there, then it'll go there. So once we actually add JavaScript to this, this time will go here will be overridden by what we do in our JavaScript. Okay, so now you're going to click on script.js. This is a JavaScript file. And just going back really quick to index, um, it's already referencing the JavaScript file. So if you go down here, it says script scr equals script.js. So we're already referencing that, meaning that whatever we put in here is going to be um, known. Okay, so in JavaScript, the first thing we're going to do is we are going to create a variable that holds a date object. So the way you create a variable in JavaScript is by saying, I mean, you could, do, you could use const, which is you're making a constant variable, which most of the time you're not making a, a fixed variable that doesn't change. Um, or you can use the word let. So let just says that you're making a variable. So you're going to say let, um, let's say current time. Let's let current time be equal to um, a new object so date so what that does is it's going to get your current time from your computer um, and date is what we call a constructor and that's where it says c-o-n-s-t um, and there's a class in javascript called the date class and it has a whole bunch of methods which are just functions that you can use on a date object. So think of a date object as containing a lot of different things about the date, like the month, the year, the time, the hours, the seconds, the milliseconds, all of that stuff. Okay, so after that, um, let's just try to see if we can take this current time and just print it at the bottom of our screen. Um, so the way that you would do that is you would say document um, and what that does is it just takes the document that we're um, 
we're working in, so our HTML document, then you're going to use a method called get element by ID. So it's going to finish it for me. Um, and then what was the ID that we chose for this? Um, we chose F, the footer. Okay. And then you're going to do dot inner HTML. And what that does is, okay, what are we changing? What are we accessing? We're just accessing a line of text inside the HTML file. That's all. So what do we want to do with that text? So instead of having the text be equal to time will go here, we want to actually get the time, right? So how do we get the time? Well, right now, let's just throw in the current time object. And let's see what shows up when we do that. So if we run this and we go down to the bottom, you'll see Sunday, May 10th, 2020, 130308. So it even gives us the seconds. It gives us the time zone um, and all that stuff. So you might not want all of that at the very bottom of your website. You might want um, just the time, right? So how could you go about just displaying the time itself, right? So instead of just using current time, we can actually call more methods, which are functions inside of the date class. So we can say let hour equal um, current time dot, and then it will give you all of the different methods that you can use in the date class. So we have a date object that's called current time, and then we are getting the hours. So I would click get hours, open parenthesis, close parenthesis, because this is a method, which again is like a function. Okay, so after that, instead of current time, let's do hours or hour. Let's see what happens there. Oh, so notice that it's printing 13. Um, so it's giving us military time which is fine for now, but we'll fix that later. Um, after that, let's do minutes. So let's make a variable for minutes. Let minute equal, and you can call this whatever you want to call it. I'm calling it min. Um, current time dot get, um, and then there should be a get minutes method. So now, instead of just document dot get element by id f dot inner html equals hour let's do hour and let's concatenate that with a colon and then let's concatenate that with minutes okay so what's my error here oh it's not minutes it's min Okay, so if we scroll down, notice that it's 13 colon 5. So that's great. I mean, so that means it's it's 105, but notice that the O isn't in front, um, and we, we're at 13 o'clock. So it looks kind of funny right now. So luckily, in JavaScript, we can um, use if statements to modify our variables as needed. Um, so let's think about how we can modify our variables using if statements. So if we said something like if, and then inside your condition for if, so back in Python, you could just say like whatever it was, but in JavaScript, you need parentheses. And inside the parentheses are what your condition would be. So if I said something like if hour um, is greater than 12, right? then our result will go inside of curly brackets. So you're going to use open curly bracket, and it will close the curly bracket for you because REPLit is nice. Um, so if the hour is greater than 12, then we want to set our hour equal to our current hour, so say our hour is 13, minus what? So if you at 13 and you want to get to 1, you would subtract 12. Great. Um, also, in terms of minutes, oh, by the way, let's check this real quick so that we make sure we're good. Okay, so now it says 1 colon 7. Great. Um, and then after that, let's do another if statement. And let's say if min, so if our minutes are less than 10. So 
So then you're going to do open curly bracket, and your result is going to go into here. So if minutes are less than 10, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set minutes equal to. Now, luckily in JavaScript, it doesn't care what variable type that you have. So for example, minutes in general um, originally was, uh, was an integer. Um, but we can just set that equal to a string um, right away, and JavaScript doesn't care. So you could say something like quote zero plus minutes. So what that will do is it'll take a zero, it'll concatenate it with the current minute. So say the current minute is eight, then you would do zero plus eight, and you would get oh eight. So now if we run this, you'll see 108 at the very bottom. Now, if you wanted to do 108 p.m. or something like that, um, then you could add one more variable in here. You could say, let um, let's call it period. I think that's what it's called, like the time period is a.m. or p.m. Let's start it at a.m. And then we can throw another if statement here that says if uh, our is greater than or equal to 12, um, then let's change our period Yeah. And you can also do an else statement here. So else, we can say period equals AM. Just to be sure that if it was PM, then it'll switch to AM. Um, and now in the end, let's concatenate that. So we can do plus um, and then period down here. And when we click run, we see 109 AM. And everything looks great. And so that's how you would add the time. So what you're going to do is you're going to try and um, use all of what we just did. So current time equals new date. And instead of doing hours and minutes and period, you're going to be doing um, the, you're going to be displaying the date. So you're going to say like the current date is something. Um, and actually in front here, we could say something like that. We could say current time is, oops, and then we have to put a plus here. The current time is 1.10 a.m. And that's it for the time.